Hello developers. Scroll animations are pretty cool, right? Now, let me ask you something. Can you really create advanced scroll triggered animations without writing any JavaScript? Well, today I'm going to show you exactly how using just CSS. You've probably seen tons of amazing scroll effects built with JavaScript libraries like GSAP. In fact, I've even created a bunch of those tutorials right here on this channel. But today, we're doing something completely different. In this tutorial, we're not touching a single line of JavaScript. No libraries, no frameworks, just pure HTML and CSS. Yep, you heard that right. We'll explore some brand new CSS features like animation timeline and scroll timeline. And I'll also walk you through how browser support is growing for these properties. And then we'll jump straight into real world examples. Here's what we're building together today. Smooth fade in animations, slide in effects from different directions, zoom out and blur animations, flip card animations, staggered reveals, scroll progress indicators, and more. What you'll learn in this tutorial, how to trigger animations when elements scroll into view using just CSS, how to use animation timeline view and animation timeline scroll root block, how to control exactly. When animations start and end using animation range, how to combine multiple effects like staggered reveals, flip cards, and scroll progress bars, and how to structure your HTML and CSS cleanly so your projects stay organized and professional. And trust me, once you see what's possible with just CSS, you'll never look at scroll animations the same way again. Before we dive in, if you enjoy tutorials like this, make sure to press that like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me create more advanced CSS tutorials just for you. All right, let's get started. Now first, let's quickly walk through the HTML structure we'll be working with. We start with a hero section, a full screen intro that grabs attention at the top of the page. Inside it, we have an H1 tag for the title and a paragraph tag for a short description. Both of these elements will animate smoothly when the page loads. Next, we have a scroll indicator. It's just a simple div sitting at the top of the page. We'll animate its width to stretch as the user scrolls down. Then comes the navigation bar, a nav element with a basic logo inside. It'll slide into view once the hero section scrolls out. After that, we move into the main sections. Each demo section has a heading, a short description, and the animated element itself. For example, the first section has a fade in box, the second has a slide in box, the third scales up a box, and so on. We also have a staggered animation section where three small boxes animate one after another with a delay between each. And finally, we wrap up with a section showing the scroll progress indicator linked to the entire page scroll. This clean and simple structure makes it super easy to manage multiple scroll animations. All right, now that you understand the HTML, let's jump into the CSS and see where the real magic happens. Now, let's focus on the main CSS concepts that power everything in this project. We start by setting up some basic CSS variables inside root. These hold all the main colors just to keep things consistent and easy to manage. Then comes the fun part, CSS only scroll animations. Let's break down exactly how they work. Let's start with the first animation, the hero title. Here's the magic. We're using two new CSS properties, animation timeline, view animation range, entry 0%, cover 50%. Animation timeline view tells the browser, Chate, don't play this animation immediately, only play it based on how the element enters the viewport. It literally links the animation to the user's scroll. Now animation range entry 0% cover 50% controls when the animation starts and ends. Entry 0% means the animation starts the second the element touches the viewport. Cover 50% means the animation ends when half of the element is covering the viewport. Pretty cool, right? Then we define the keyframes using a keyframes fade slide down where the element starts invisible and shifted upwards by 100 pixels and gradually fades and slides into its original position. This way, as you scroll, the browser automatically calculates the progress and animates the element based on how much it's visible. And this is the core idea we'll reuse for most of the project. For the hero subtitle, it's the same concept. The only difference is the animation range starts at entry 10%, so it animates a little later than the title. New trick here, you don't even need animation delay anymore. 
you can create a delay effect naturally with just animation range. Next, the scroll indicator at the top. Instead of linking to a single element, we link the animation to the entire page scroll using animation timeline scroll root block. The keyframes stretch the width from 0% to 100% creating a progress bar that grows as the user scrolls. New learning you can animate based on the entire document's scroll, not just an element's visibility. Then the navigation bar. We use animation timeline view and animation range, exit 0%, exit 100%. This time, we're triggering the animation when the hero section exits the viewport. It makes the navigation slide in right after the hero scrolls away. New concept you can trigger animations based on an element exiting, not just entering, the viewport. Now for the animations, fade in box, simple opacity fade in tied to viewport entry. Slide in left box, same technique, but the keyframes move the box horizontally. Scale up box, start small and grows into place. Plus, we add a little bounce using a custom cubic bezier easing. Rotate in box combines rotation and scaling inside the same keyframe. New concept, you can animate multiple transforms together Staggered animation, we have three small boxes. Each has a different animation delay, creating a beautiful cascading effect. New learning, you can easily stagger animations without any JavaScript. Zoom out text, the text starts large and zooms down to its normal size. Another creative use of transform, scale blur in image. The image starts heavily blurred and sharpens into focus. New trick, you can animate CSS filters like blur using scroll, Flip card, this one flips on the Y axis from 180 degrees to zero. You don't even need 3D libraries. Pure CSS rotation is enough. Reveal section, slides upward into view with a delayed start using entry 10%, cover 60%. Rotate and scale logo, combines a full 360 degree rotation with scaling. Multiple effects together, all controlled by scroll. Summary of concepts you learned. Animation timeline view connects animations to viewport entry and exit. Animation timeline scroll root block connects animations to the entire page scroll. Animation range controls exactly when animations start and end. You can animate opacity, transforms, filters, width, rotation, and even combine them. And you can build staggered animations and 3D flip effects, all without JavaScript. And all of this was done using pure CSS. And that's it, developers. You just learned how to create full-blown scroll-triggered animations without writing a single line of JavaScript. You explored brand new CSS properties like animation timeline and animation range, and you saw how powerful they are when combined with pure creativity. From smooth fades to zooms, flips, staggered reveals, and even a scroll progress bar, you did it all. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more front-end magic. And don't forget, the full source code is linked in the description if you want to practice and experiment on your own. Until next time, keep building, keep pushing boundaries, and remember, your next big idea might just be one scroll away.